Live from KSEC 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making news overnight, San Antonio police are still looking for two people who invaded a home on the southwest side. The final stretch of the campaign season already heating up. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington with the latest from the campaign trail just ahead. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, it is 79 degrees and we are excited because we saw rain this morning. We'll have more details just ahead. And good morning to you. It is Tuesday. It is September 8th. We hope you had a great Labor Day weekend back out of this morning and uh, we have to welcome in some folks maybe waking up early to get ready for their school day today. Yeah, and waking up to rain. I know both of us on the way in, we saw the rain driving in, so yeah, very nice. The road, roads weren't wet, but there mm -hmm. were uh, definitely raindrops on the windshield this morning. Let's bring in Justin, who's in from Mike Osterhage. Good morning. Guys, the, this morning is sort of the tip of the iceberg, so we're going to get a few showers, but there's a lot more to come. We get into a very busy pattern here, and we're still talking about this cold front and whether or not it's going to make it through South Texas. We're feeling better about it this morning. So let's show you the radar. Uh, we've got some showers. Most of this is really light. As they mentioned, it's, it's going to cause uh, maybe a few puddles in the roadway, but that's it. This is all moving out to the north and east. And right now, this is really starting to move out of San Antonio. So if you're on the northeast side, still seeing some shower activity. If you're on the southwest side, things are starting to wind down a little bit. I want to show you what we're watching as far as this front is concerned. Look at the numbers this morning. We've got 30s and 40s. Casper down to Denver. Denver was in the 100s just a couple days ago. They may be looking at snow before the day is over with this system. This cold front is diving south, should make it to South Texas by tomorrow. We'll bring some big changes for us, but right now temperature is still plenty warm. We're thinking 92 degrees today, 40% chance of rain. As you get those kiddos out the door this morning, uh, make sure they do have a rain jacket with them. I, I think they'll need it in the next few days with rain showers and some showers and storms in the forecast. And temperatures do fall off as we get into Thursday with that frontal boundary. We're gonna talk much more about this coming up here in just a few minutes, but we got to talk traffic now. Let's get over to Officer Nick Solis. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Justin. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a great start to your Tuesday morning. All right, currently dealing with one accident right now. This is going to be northbound I-35 South at Castle Lane. Now, other reports are coming in that's at Fisher Road, somewhere there between Fisher Road and Castle Lane. We got a two vehicle accident causing a little bit uh, moderate traffic buildup, as you can see right there at that intersection of 410 and 35. Uh, just keep that in mind. Hopefully this gets cleared up very soon. Trans guide time 281 at Divine looking good right now. Roadways do look slick though, so please be careful. Watch your speed and wear that seatbelt. We want you to get to work safely. Mark, Stephanie, back to you. Thank you, Nick. New this morning, San Antonio police looking for two people. They say invaded a home on the southwest side last night. Happened at the 300 block of Hollenbeck around 11 p.m. Police said the suspects, a man and a woman, knocked on the victim's door and said, we are taking your stuff. During the incident, SAPD says the victim was cut on his back and the suspects got away with some items. The victim was treated at the scene and is expected to be okay. Today, many districts across our area will resume in-person learning after the majority of them have been doing remote learning since mid-August. Our Sarah Costa is live outside of Mar Hill Elementary School. Now, Sarah, administrators with SAISD have been saying that the in-person learning will be slowly phased in, correct? Good morning. Yes, that is correct. SAISD is one of the four districts that will slowly begin to phase in in-person learning today. Now, that's because the county's COVID-19 positivity rate has dipped just below the 10% rate, which allows the school safety indicator going to that moderate level, which suggests that school districts can begin to slowly bring back students on campus. Now that moderate level suggests that six or fewer students are recommended in a class, but building nor classroom capacity should exceed 25%. That's according to Metro Health. Now the four districts that are slowly starting to phase in students are Alamo Heights, SAISD, NISD, and NEISD. SAISD says only 10% of students are allowed to return and classes will be limited to six students. For those students whose parents have given consent, we will prior to prioritize student return by focusing on those who benefit most from in-person learning. Now, NISD, the district will begin some in-person instruction starting after Labor Day with a transition plan outlined. Northeast ISC says up to five students will be allowed in each class during the first phase. They're going to be focusing on special needs students as well as children of working parents. 
Alamo Heights says students in the district will be starting to phase in after September 8th and teachers will return to campuses to teach and work on the same date as well. And we talked to the superintendent with SAISD, Dr. Pedro Martinez, on Sunday in our leading essay segment. And he said that they have really been doing well virtually with the older students. They say where they've seen the struggle is with the younger students. And that's why they're going to prioritize bringing back their pre-K students slowly through second grade, especially those with working parents and those also with special needs. Reporting live. Near downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Back to you guys. Thank you, Sarah. And here's a look at the latest coronavirus numbers in Bear County. There has been 47,543 COVID-19 cases since the start of the pandemic. 978 people have died. About 300 COVID-19 patients are in the hospital and 141 of them are in the intensive care unit. 83 are on ventilators and more than 40,000 people have recovered in Bear County. With Labor Day weekend behind us, the political season has entered a new phase. Both candidates are now on the campaign trail with their eyes on battleground states. ABC's Faith Abebe is in Washington with more. Thank you. Happy President Day. Donald Happy Trump Day. delivering an insult-fueled campaign stump speech from the northern steps of the White House on Labor Day. And Biden's a stupid person. You know that. Stepping up attacks on his political rival, Joe Biden, as he announced yet another big surprise on the way in the fight for a COVID-19 vaccine. So we're going to have a vaccine very soon, maybe even before a very special day. On the campaign trail in Pennsylvania, Biden hitting back at Trump's handling of the pandemic. He didn't have the guts to take on COVID and threw up the white flag. And commenting on whether he would take a quickly produced vaccine. Only if it was completely transparent that other experts in the country could look at it. At the small socially distanced gathering, Biden telling union supporters he, not Trump, would be better at digging the U.S. out of a slumped economy. The only thing standing in the way of us getting for people to be in a position where they actually have the ability to make a decent wage is to make sure that we uh, remove the guy who's there right now. Joe Biden, the radical socialist Democrats would immediately collapse the economy. Both candidates still talking about those bombshell allegations published in the Atlantic magazine last Thursday, accusing Trump of disparaging service members wounded and killed at war. Biden taking it personal, referencing his late son, Bo, who served in Iraq. I'll tell you something, my bow wasn't a loser or a sucker. The president still blasting the Atlantic peace as a quote, phony made up story. And then saying this about the current military leadership. I'm not saying the military is in love with me. The soldiers are. The top people in the Pentagon probably aren't because they want to do nothing but fight wars so that all of those wonderful companies that make the bombs and make the planes and make everything else stay happy. And the president heads to Winston-Salem, North Carolina today, where the county GOP chair is calling on Trump to wear a mask when he arrives for his airport rally, adding, quote, there's no excuse. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. 438, 79 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, even though Labor Day is in the books, there's still plenty of big sales on some of the most popular items this year. And an update on those enormous wildfires that continue to destroy thousands of acres every day in parts of California. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, it is 79 degrees and we are excited about the rain, but there's going to be a lot happening weather-wise. We're going to check in with Justin after the break. In your morning headlines, crews in parts of California battling dozens of dangerous wildfires. Fire conditions are expected to worsen with the arrival of hot, dry winds. U.S. Forest Service says it's closing national forests in the southern half of California because of the dangerous conditions across the state. Southern California's Angeles National Forest, where a wildfire shut down several mountain roads, says it will be closed for at least a week. More than 2 million acres have burned so far in 2020, setting a state record. And fire officials say the most dangerous part of the year is still ahead. Hong Kong police are defending the officers who tackled a 12-year-old girl to the ground during pro-democracy protests, protests on Sunday. Video shows the girl trying to run from an officer, but she only makes it a short distance before she's taken down. Hong Kong police say protesters, including the girl, had been intercepted for a stop and search. The girl's mother says her daughter was buying art supplies with her older son when they encountered police. Sunday's demonstrations were one of the largest pro 
democracy gathering since China imposed a national security law in June. Wall Street will try to make up some ground after all three major stock indices finished down before the Labor Day break. Tech stocks led much of the decline after several record-breaking days. The Dow finished 159 points lower. It was the biggest weekly decline in more than two months. Wall Street's slide on Friday followed a Labor Department report that showed U.S. hiring slowed to 1.4 million jobs last month. And time now is 442 and 79 degrees for now. Still ahead, because of the pandemic, people are getting more meals via drive through or takeout. We'll show you which of those restaurants have the healthiest menus. And sales at major retailers are ramping up after Labor Day. We're going to tell you who's offering the best deals. And welcome back. It's 445. Labor Day might be over, but some sales are just getting started. ABC's Becky Worley has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, Labor Day might be over, but the sales are just getting started. Everyone is going to be shopping earlier because they don't know what's going to come in the next couple months. There might be another lockdown. So people are going to be getting their gifts earlier the next savings event is the big one, Black Friday. And let me tell you, it's gonna be weird this year. Why? Because as brick and mortar sales have dwindled or disappeared during lockdown, online sales have boomed. There were shutdowns and they had a lot of merchandise. So instead of just moving that merchandise out, they're putting that out on deep discounts so people can actually purchase them. So where can you find these big fall deals? We'll have everything you need to know to save big coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Becky Worley, ABC News, Oakland, California. Well, takeout's more popular than ever these days, and on any given day, more than a third of Americans eat fast food. But that doesn't mean your choice has to be bad for you. That's right. 12 on your size, Marilyn Moritz looks at which popular chains get high marks for putting healthy options on the menu. Customized grain bowls, locally grown fruits and veggies, and colorful vegetarian entrees. No, you're not at a fancy bistro. These are from chain restaurants. Two-thirds of people surveyed say it's easier now to eat healthy at restaurants. But is that true? Consumer Reports nutritionists evaluated the menus from 17 popular chain restaurants. We rated a restaurant's overall healthfulness on many criteria. Do they feature whole healthy foods front and center? Are there healthy alternatives to sugar-sweetened beverages? And can you find a variety of whole grains on the menu? First, the bad news. The four at the top of the ratings aren't even in San Antonio, though Sweet Grain and True Food Kitchen are in Texas. However, both Chipotle and Panera Bread have several local locations and rated very good for offering nutritious choices. Another bit of good news, CR found that the calorie counts pretty much match what the restaurants claim. Sodium though, that was a problem. Sodium levels at restaurants can be off the charts. And we found in our laboratory tests that the sodium levels the restaurant claims are not always accurate. So don't shake on more salt. And condiments like barbecue sauce and soy sauce are high in sodium, so best to use them sparingly. Restaurants post their nutritional information on their websites, so you can plan before you go. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. Okay, so the restaurant's at the bottom of the Consumer Reports list. I don't want to say it because I love it, but the Cheesecake oh. Factory is on there. Subway, Olive Garden, Applebee's, McDonald's, and Domino's. Ouch, all my favorites. Uh, they suggested to cut back on sodium and offer more fresh veggies, whole grains, and more drinks that aren't loaded with sugar. Check on traffic right now, 448. Nick, how are we out there? Good, because they didn't say Wingstop in that article, so I'm ah. great now. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, things are looking good right now. We got another accident to report. This is going to be downtown off of 35 and 90 off on Powell and Nagalito Street. Looks like a two vehicle accident. Starting to see a little more accidents because the roadways are slick, so please be careful when you're driving. Watch that speed out there. Still working on this accident. This is northbound IH 35 South at Casson Lane. This is involving a cement truck. Hopefully, they can get this out of the way soon, not causing too much traffic buildup, but you can see there at the bottom of the screen, there is a little bit moderate traffic going on those northbound lanes just past 410 on 35. 10 at Callahan East, looking good right now, flowing smooth, roadways are slick, be careful. 10 at Frio, inbounds and outbounds, looks great as well. And we'll do one more. 10 at UTSA on the northwest side, two cars on the roadway there. Wow, the rain, the, uh, the roads have gotten really wet in yes. some spots. In the, in the what, past hour or so? Yeah, the last yeah. hour or so. You want to watch Justin get jittery? 
Watch, okay. watch All right. this. Let's see it. Hey, Justin, get us updated on this polar vortex. Oh, <laughs> I know you did not go there. <laughs> oh, uh, let's Just talk about the roasting. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this cold front, I tell you what, uh, we, we've been talking about it for a while now. It's been giving us all headaches. I wish you could see the, the texting that we've been doing between the meteorologists here at KSET. It's, it's a long list. Uh, we've been talking a lot about this, but it, it does look like it's at least going to give us some cooler temperatures as we get into Thursday. We'll talk about that in just a second. First, let's talk about these showers that we have going on here across Bear County. Moving across San Antonio right now, all very light. You saw there on Nick's trans guide that uh, there were some wet roads out there. So, yeah, this will be around for about another hour or so before it moves out to the north and east. We'll see some chances for showers and storms today. Right now, we have it pegged at about a 40% shot. Take a look at the numbers up north. These are the current temperatures. Casper, 31. 40 in Denver, a huge change. This is some cold air coming out of Canada, and it does uh, look like it's going to move into Texas next couple days, and eventually, yes, South Texas, potentially, as we get into Thursday. The front right now trying to move through Amarillo, and we're going to put this forward into motion for you here with a forecast. And so by this afternoon, look at these numbers coming down in Amarillo and Lubbock. I don't know if it'll be as cold as 45, but uh, there is some truth to that up across parts of Colorado. And then as this sweeps south, this is tomorrow at 5 o'clock. We're still in the warm air here in San Antonio, but some of our western counties, Hill Country, Edwards Plateau, starting to see those numbers tumble a little bit. And then by the time we get into Thursday morning, we are talking cooler temperatures even here in San Antonio, I think. And there could be widespread 40s across West Texas. So what a change after what has been a pretty brutal summer. Uh, take a look at the radar right now. You see some of the showers there across South Texas, but there is snow now falling and flying from Casper down to Denver. Denver is a place that could see some snow today after having a high temperature of 101 just a couple days ago. Really impressive. So let's look at our forecast here. We've got uh, showers and storms around 40% chance, as I mentioned today. I think it becomes more widespread tomorrow. So we're talking about a 70% chance of rain on your Wednesday. As our front gets a little bit closer, we'll have some upper level support too. We could see some thunderstorms throughout this, but we're not looking for severe weather. I think the biggest threat we're going to be talking about here is some heavy rain uh, where you see some of these orange colors and I'll step off here. That's estimating five to seven inches. Now I'll point out that this is over the next five days or so. So the, the, this is over time. It's not going to all fall at once. But we show you this to show you that the, some of the heaviest rain could fall out west. 79 degrees right now. Some rain coming down at the airport. 70s for the most part across the area. Still plenty warm out there. And we'll still see a warm day today. Uh, temperatures expected to make it into the 90s. Dew points are still high too, so it's still going to be a little bit sticky out there. Forecast calls for about a 20% chance of rain through the morning time. And we'll up that to a 40% chance as we get into uh, late this afternoon and this evening. 70% chance tomorrow. Look at the temperature on Thursday. 78 as a high temperature. 60% chance of showers. And then the sun comes back out and we'll see some rain chances staying in the forecast, but lower chances as we get into the weekend and temperatures rebound. But a pretty wild forecast as uh, we go forward here, guys. A little early for our first frost, Justin. A little, a little early. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to slap me later. And that's okay. 453, 79 degrees. And coming up next, Taylor Swift has tied Whitney Houston for one of the top spots in music. More details just ahead. In today's showbiz, a music milestone for Taylor Swift. Plus the new hockey film that could make the Hanson brothers and Dean Youngblood jealous. Here's ABC's Romina Puga. Swift has tied Whitney Houston for the most weeks atop the Billboard charts for women. Her album Folklore has spent six weeks at number one on the Billboard 200. Folklore, along with Swift's other albums, evened her with the late pop star at 46 weeks. The group with the most at number one, The Beatles, with 132 weeks. Just in time for the NHL's conference finals, a new movie about hockey. Odd Man Rush follows the true story of a Harvard grad's journey from Central Park to pro hockey overseas. Cast members include right, Trevor Gretzky, son Jeff of the great Gray one, here. Wayne Gretzky. Odd Man Rush is now streaming online. Prince Harry is finally free from Prince Charles. He's repaid more than $3 million in taxpayer money used to renovate Frogmore Cottage. The Windsor home was intended for Meghan and Harry before they gave up their royal duties. The couple recently bought a house in California and announced a deal with Netflix. And happy birthday, Pink, the famed singer turns 41. 
and action. Actor David Arquette is 49, and that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Romina Puga for ABC News. Three minutes till. Still ahead, a look at how the home of the San Antonio Spurs is being transformed into one of Bear County's mega voting sites. And want to get paid for not using Facebook? Why the company wants to pay users for not using their app or Instagram ahead of the 2020 election. Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making news this morning, it is back to school time again, this time for some in-person learning for many schools in our area. Plus, wildfires continue to plague large parts of California. Outside with live cam, hard to tell from this shot, but some of the uh, highways are wet this morning. We've had some showers move through the area very early on your Tuesday morning. We'll check with Justin in just a moment. Good morning to you. It is Tuesday, September 8th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a great extended weekend for a lot of you. And I know you've been making Justin nervous all morning talking about a cold front. A cold front, <laughs> yes. And this time of year, I would be hedging my bets too. It's still awfully early, but it does happen, right, Justin? It does, but rarely. This is, it's, it's going to be kind of weird. I think it'll be a shock to the system as we get towards midweek. But yes, a frontal boundary moving in. It's going to feel a little bit more like fall, I think, by Thursday. There's been a big question of whether or not it will actually move through. As of this morning, it looks like we'll at least get a taste of it here in San Antonio. 92 degrees, the high temperature today is still plenty warm. We'll get the mostly cloudy skies, some chances for storms out there. We're already seeing a few showers this morning. We'll call for a 40% chance of rain, especially as we get into the afternoon. Let's take a look at the radar right now. A few showers. Most of this is light moving out to the north and east along I-35. So places like Shirts, Cibolo, uh, New Braunfels, up towards Bolverde, you're seeing some light rain right now. And there are a few more showers as you get out west towards Lake Hills and Bandera this morning. Forecast, 20% chance of rain, and then look for a 30% shot by 2 o'clock, 40% shot by 5 o'clock. High temperature again right around 92. We're going to talk much more about that cold front coming up here in just a few minutes. But let's get over to traffic now. And Nick, how are things looking? Uh, another accident, Justin, so uh, roadway is definitely affecting the traffic out there. Please be careful. Drive safely. Uh, have this accident here. It's going to be medical drive at Fredericksburg Road. Looks like a vehicle's flipped over there. Uh, not causing too much traffic delay right now, but keep that in mind if you are heading towards the medical center from I-10. Still working on this accident, Powell at Nagalito Street. That's near downtown off 35 and 90. And we have this major accident, northbound I-35 South at Cass and Lane, those northbound lanes. This one should be getting cleared up here very soon. All right, drive times, uh, 151 eastbound, 1604 to 90, nine minutes. And if you're eastbound 90 from 1604 to 35, 11 minutes, really good times there. Trans guy, let's see how it's like outside. Uh, 10 at Callahan East, very slick there on the roadways. 10 at Frio, inbounds and outbounds, that looks good going towards downtown. Town, and we'll do one more here. 10 at UTSA Boulevard, the same traffic flowing smoothly. All right, everyone, please wear your seatbelt. Mark, Stephanie, back to you. Thanks, Nick. After the majority of various school districts started off the year online, today many will be starting to have students back on campus. And this after Metro Health has given the green light with a directive to area school districts. Our Sarah Costa is live outside of Mar Hill Elementary, where SAISD will slowly phase in students. Good morning. Good morning, and they're one of the uh, handful of districts that will begin slowly phasing in students back onto campus. And this after the county's positivity rates dipped just below 10%, moving Metro Health School safety indicator to the moderate level, which is right under the high level. But that moderate level allows for districts to slowly beginning to bring students back on campus. In the moderate level, groups of six or fewer students are recommended, but building nor classroom capacity should not exceed above 25% according to Metro Health. Now, the district that will the districts that will begin phasing in students include SAISD, Northside ISD, Northeast Side ISD, and Alamo Heights. And SAISD says only 10% of students are allowed to return and classes will be limited to six students. For those students whose parents have given consent, we will prioritize student return by focusing on those who will benefit from most from in-person learning. That's according to the SAISD district. And then when we spoke with Dr. Pedro Martinez on Sunday in our SA leading segment, he said that they're going to focus on majority of those students coming back, special needs education students, and also those from pre from kindergarten 
to second grade. They said they've seen more successful, they've been more successful with virtual learning with the older students, especially the high school students. But you can find a full list of the district's plans that are returning to school in, to, for in-person learning today, right now on KSAT.com. Reporting live near downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News, back to you. Good morning headlines, 25 major wildfires burning across the state of California. That includes the massive Creek fire near Fresno that has scorched almost 80,000 acres in four days. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the latest. This morning, firefighters across California are battling dozens of wildfires fueled by record breaking heat. One of the largest fires outside Fresno exploded overnight to 135,000 acres with 0% containment after already burning dozens of homes in the town of Big Creek. Monday night, the California National Guard attempted another rescue using a military Chinook helicopter after reports of 14 hikers trapped at a mountain resort. But authorities said the mission was unsuccessful because heavy smoke prevented the pilots from making a safe landing. Unlike this successful rescue over the weekend, when a helicopter pulled hundreds of people to safety as flames surrounded them at a campsite. Some of them were in critical condition with burns or broken bones. To get aircraft to fly at night into the mountains is, is um, really something else. And now concerns about the extreme fire danger spreading to other states. In Colorado, a wildfire north of Denver is now the largest in state history, burning nearly 100,000 acres. And in Oregon, the air quality deteriorating as rare east winds funnel smoke in from multiple fires. One of those fires burning near Spokane, Washington. Authorities say up to 80% of the homes in the town of Malden have been destroyed by a fire sweeping through the area. This resident posting a picture of the fire, writing, the entire town is gone. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. Here at home, the parents of a teen who was shot and killed during an argument on Sunday night say they're hoping his death will get the message out that gun violence is not the answer. Stacy and Jim Harrison said they were devastated to learn their son, 16-year-old Ian Harrison, died while he was at a Northside apartment complex. San Antonio police say he and 17-year-old suspect got into a scuffle over a gun and Ian was shot. His parents say they were hopeful their son would get back on the right track after suffering from drug addiction when his brother died in a motorcycle accident years ago. If you have something, a beef about someone, just fight it out like you used to, you know? Why are you bringing guns in and it takes away people forever and it changes everybody's life yeah. that is involved and they just yeah. don't understand the impact until it, it, it'll happen to them one day, you know, maybe, maybe not, but they might lose someone close and it's devastating. The family tells our crew that Ian's friends are planning to have a candlelight vigil at 8 p.m. tonight at the Converse Pool and Park on School Street. Governor Greg Abbott has extended a statewide disaster declaration for COVID-19. It was originally issued back in March. Abbott says this will ensure the right resources and strategies are in place. This week, Abbott is expected to lay out plans for the next steps in Texas for terms in terms of pandemic safety. We will keep you updated. Meanwhile, Labor Day brought people out to the Comal River. There were smaller crowds than usual. Many surrounding businesses were closed. In an effort to slow the spread of the virus, river access from public parks in the area is still closed off, but there were some out tubing outfitters allowing river access. We spoke to several visitors who decided to take a road trip to the river. Many were doing their best to keep their distance and stay safe. 508, 76 degrees. And still ahead, find out why Facebook is deciding to pay some users to not use their app during the election season. And next, the AT&T Center will open its doors once again, but this time it's not the Spurs that folks will be going to see. We'll give you a behind-the-scenes look at how the arena is being transformed into one of those Bear County mega voting sites. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, 76 degrees, and we are excited about the raindrops we saw this morning driving into work. And we're going to check in with Justin to see what we can expect for the rest of the day and the week. We'll be right back. 512, the AT&T Center expect to have people back inside next month, but it won't be for basketball games. The home of the Spurs will be used as one of the county's mega voting sites. RJ Marcus has a preview of what voters can expect. The AT&T Center will have a different look this fall. It will be transformed from a place for cheering Spurs fans to a mega voting center. Even before the NBA agreed to use its arenas as polling places, Bear County, which owns the AT&T Center and Spurs Sports and Entertainment, were working on a plan. Um, we actually had had conversations with the Spurs and their general counsel, Bobby Bettis, going back to 
probably uh, May. County Commissioner Justin Rodriguez said one of the main ideas behind using the at t Center came down to keeping voters safe during a pandemic. Could we potentially use that as a mega site um, for maximizing spacing? You know that uh, there's going to be long lines whether you go early or wait till election day. Well, you've got we've got to keep that six feet of distance between folks in line and those that are that are voting. The at t Center is one of four mega voting sites expected to be announced soon. The sites will be spread across the city with the hopes of increasing voter turnout. The idea of putting you know up to 50 or 75 voting machines at each of those mega centers, making sure they have uh, accessible parking, ADA access, um, all the things I think uh, bus line access is another thing we need. While the final game plan for the at t Center is still in the works, Rodriguez said there will be no shortage of personal protective equipment for election workers. The Spurs have also offered to extend voting hours and possibly have some of their employees take part. They are, uh, I think, ultimately um, always about community and they're always about making sure uh, particularly people are engaged in, um, in, in civic awareness. The county typically has somewhere around 35 early voting sites, but would like to get closer to 50 to give voters as many options as possible. This initiative with the at t Center is a key part of that, especially for underserved communities and voter access. No uh, the history of uh, voter disenfran disenfranchisement in, in our community, not just here, but everywhere. The better access we have, the more we get the word out, the more polls we have available, the longer hours we have. It gives everyone an opportunity to get out and express um, you know, their voice. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. 514, 76 degrees. And coming up next, the new details on Xbox's new and less expensive gaming console. Can be painful. Introducing Asper Cream with Essential Oil. Now calming lavender oil is combined with fast-acting lidocaine for lasting relief. New Asper Cream with Essential Oil. At Safe Flight, we're committed to taking care of you and your car. We'll fix it right with no contact service you can trust. So if you have auto glass damage, stay safe with Safe Flight. Safe Flight Repair, Safe Flight Replace. In today's tech fights, a less expensive Xbox possibly unveiled. Online tech reports say images of the Xbox Series S have surfaced online. They show a smaller gaming console with a $299 price tag. That's $200 less than the Xbox One. The new console is expected to launch in November. Bose is reportedly close to releasing its new earbuds. A new video reveals the company is dropping the name Bose from the product, now called Quiet Comfort Earbuds. No word when they'll be released. Expected price tag is about $250. Facebook is offering to pay users to deactivate their accounts or take surveys ahead of the election. Those invited to participate could get as much as $120 to stay off the app for up to six weeks. It's part of a study to better understand the impact of the social media sites on political attitudes. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. Well, heck, some people quit Facebook for free. I mean, it'd be nice to <laughs> learn a something. incentive. Yeah. And a lot of people have, have given up. Yeah. 518 right now. Let's go ahead and check the roads with Officer Nick Solis. I know driving in, we saw rain. Yeah, a lot of rain, and it's making the roadway slick, Steph, and we have a lot of accidents to report. Just had another one come out right now. This is northbound I-35 South, just uh, north of U.S. Highway 90. Now, this has actually caused the westbound I-10 ramp that goes to 35 to close down. And uh, as a car is overturned, I have some more trans guide footage on this. Still working on this right here. This is Medical Drive at Fredericksburg Road. You can see right there, Fredericksburg Road is already uh, moderate to heavy traffic going uh, East there, you would say, right past medical. So keep that in mind if you have to head that way. I know that's towards USAA if they're open. But here we go. This is 35 at US 90. There's a car flipped over, and then there's another vehicle accident. Looks like it's a two vehicle accident there. Uh, keep this in mind. Hopefully, this doesn't cause too much traffic build up and they get it cleared up fast. But like I said, 10 westbound to go to 35. That ramp is closed down. All right, thank you, Nick. First things first, we do have some showers moving through the area this morning. 
Yeah, it, you know, Nick was talking about some of those accidents. I'm wondering if there's just enough rain there to yeah. just cause yeah, those roads to be slick. Just that light uh, coating. And we're, we're going to see some more showers and storms, I think, this afternoon. There's about a 40% chance of some scattered activity. You look at the radar right now. This is light stuff moving through northeast San Antonio, now moving towards New Braunfels. Shirts again, you're going to get a little, a little bit of rain this morning. It's not going to add up to much. But I'll tell you, as we go into the forecast, there are going to be much more in the way of chances when it comes to rainfall. We could see some decent numbers uh, over the next few days. Here's a look at the temperature. 77, Boulevardi, 78, Holota, 75, Rio Medina, 77, Randolph, 78, Pleasanton, 77, in Uvalde. It's still fairly warm out there. And today's going to be a fairly warm day. Outside, 76 degrees at the airport, still reporting a little bit of light rain. Dew point obviously is high at 74. We've got a south southeasterly breeze at about 9. It could be a little bit breezy today. Here's what we're watching. Cold front. This is the frontal boundary that we've been talking about for about a week now. And it is starting to bring some very cold air. Places like Casper, Boise, Cutbank, even Denver now down to 37 after seeing some really hot temperatures last couple days. So this front for early September is nothing short of impressive. It is going to be shifting south into Texas, and it will bring some cooler air for us. This is just one model, and it really shows cool down in the panhandle today. This is at 6 o'clock, 40s and 50s potentially, and that cooler air slowly slides south. Now, as it moves south, the air moderates a little bit. It's not going to be as cold, but I do think that by Thursday morning, we should at least see a little bit of that here in San Antonio and temperatures will fall off and we'll see some cooler temperatures on Thursday. But certainly if you're in the Hill Country, Edwards Plateau, it's going to be a bit of a shock to the system. This is an early season front here. Not much rain yet across Texas other than the showers we're seeing this morning. But you see all the activity around Casper. There's snow flying there. Denver starting to see a little bit of snow. Rapid City. And we're going to see some energy uh, moving through here. So here's what our future cast looks like. This is noontime today, isolated to scattered showers. And then by the afternoon, a little bit more widespread, 40% chance, as I mentioned. And then tomorrow, I think we get even more widespread rain, some showers, some storms, no severe weather, but there could be some pockets of heavier rain, especially out west. And this is 7 o'clock tomorrow evening. That frontal boundary getting a little bit closer gives us some good lift. And that's when we think rain chances will be as high as they are. Uh, this is the rainfall uh, totals, or at least estimates, one through or over the next five days. Let's say that. And uh, we're seeing some pretty extensive numbers, I think, out west. Maybe up three, four inches, maybe a little bit higher than that. And then here around San Antonio, we could be talking about an inch to two inches, depending on where some of that heavy rain falls. So just something to keep in mind. As far as the forecast goes, 20% chance of rain through noontime today, 30% chance 2 o'clock will up to a 40% chance 5 o'clock. Temperatures should still eventually make it into the low 90s. But the numbers fall off a little bit by Thursday. So 86 tomorrow, 70% chance of rain. 78 the high temperature on Thursday, 60% chance of rain. And then we've got the temperatures back in the upper 80s by the weekend. But still rain chances. This is a very active pattern that we're getting into. And it looks like uh, tomorrow probably our busiest day guys thank you justin 523 right now 76 degrees and coming up next actors sam neal and jeff goldblum team up for a jurassic duet during the filming of the latest jurassic world movie what do movie actors do on a day off from filming sometimes they get musical cnn's david daniel has that and more in today's hollywood minute it's our first go through so listen to this Sam Neill and Jeff Goldblum teamed up on a few tunes during a break from filming Jurassic World Dominion in the UK. I've grown accustomed to her face. She almost makes the day begin. Neil posted their rendition of I've Grown Accustomed to Her Face from My Fair Lady on his Instagram page, the latest in Neil's series of quarantine videos on his various social media. I've grown accustomed to your face. This certain type of person rises to the top. Lee of Schreiber is taking on Ernest Hemingway. The actor is set to star in the film Across the River and Into the Trees, based on one of Hemingway's final novels. He'll play a U.S. Army colonel in Italy after World War II, dealing with a terminal illness and an unexpected romance. Filming is set to start next month in and around Venice, under COVID-19 guidelines, of course. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 
Jeff Goldblum is a kind of a cool cat. I didn't almost recognize Sam Neill. Oh, yeah, he was different. He's yeah. all grayed out. Yeah, yeah. But he looks nice. <laughs> yes. 527, 76 degrees. And time now, 527, still ahead in our next half hour as the COVID-19 pandemic lingers. A look at how doctors are warning Americans to prepare for the upcoming flu season. Let's tell you more about T-Mobile's effort to offer free internet to some of its customers. Good morning. It is Tuesday. It is September 8th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a great extended weekend. Um, I know I got to, to run in the mornings, which was great to enjoy the weather before the, all this rain. I went for a quick drive yesterday. It was such a nice day before noon yesterday. Got a little warm, but still looks like we've uh, break that uh, pattern of extreme heat around here, which is always a welcome sight, Justin. You know what? We deserve it. We deserve it after yes. the summer. We had uh, the wild summer with a lot of triple digits. We're going to see sort of a wild summer in temperatures now is we're expecting at least a, a frontal battery to get close to us and this is going to cool us down especially as we get in Thursday. I want to show you the radar though first because we've got some rain moving through. This is all pretty light but it is uh, causing some issues on the roadways as Nick will tell you in just a second. You see some of the showers there around Kerrville and Comfort as well, Bandera, Bernie, and then stretching back down towards Gonzales and just north of Cuero this morning. Most of the rain starting to move out of San Antonio but you probably want to have an umbrella on standby today just in case, about a 40% chance of rain. And as we look at the picture here, uh, the big picture across the country, frontal battery in place, cooler air off to the north. This is what is sliding in our direction. Still going to be warm today and probably somewhat warm throughout the day tomorrow. But uh, then those uh, chances of rain arrive, or uh, the chances of cooler temperatures arrive, I should say, by Thursday. Uh, the best chance of rain will be tomorrow. So as you head off to the uh, bus stop next couple days for school, yeah, you may want to take a rain jacket with you and just know that it will get a little bit cooler as we get into uh, Thursday, especially. OK, some issues on the roadways. Let's talk to Nick now and see what's going on there. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Justin. Yes, yeah, still dealing with this accident. This is going to be uh, northbound I-35 South just past US Highway 90. We got a major accident there where a vehicle was rolled over. Uh, right now, it's still an active scene. Uh, expected delay. If you are heading this direction, the last detail I had seen was I-10 West. This I-10 turn turns into 90 uh, when you just get when you get past east of 35. Uh, it I-10 West right now the ramp is closed up to go to 35 North um, at this time. So expect a huge delay if you have to head downtown from 10 West. All right, accident made a medical drive at Fredericksburg Road. Still dealing with this traffic is going down there, though. It was causing big delays. Not no more. Hopefully they're getting this one out of the roadway. Here's this accident at 35 and US 90. Uh, right now you got two fire trucks there and it still looks uh, like one whole lane is closed down. So still expect a delay if you're heading in this direction. Mark Stephanie back to you. Thank you, Nick. Trouble was waiting on the other side of the front door for a man on the southwest side. He told police he answered a knock on the door, then was robbed. It happened in a neighborhood off Quintana Road in the 300 block of Hollenbeck. Our Katrina Weber is live at Public Safety Headquarters with that story. Now, Katrina, we understand the victim was also hurt in this. Yes, he was. The police tell us that he somehow suffered a small cut on his back. Uh, the robbers left with some of his belongings as well. Uh, police tell us that they were last seen running away from the 300 block of Hollenbeck around 11 last night. According to the victim, this home invasion involved a bit of bait and switch. He told police a woman initially knocked on his door shortly before 11, but when he answered it, two men forced their way inside saying they were taking his stuff. At some point, that man suffered the cut on his lower back, and it seems that paramedics were able to treat him at the scene. Police did not release much of a description of the robbers. They searched the area but did not make any arrests. Reporting live at Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. With Labor Day 2020 now behind us, the U.S. heading towards the start of fall and flu season. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, this comes as the country passes more than 189,000 known COVID-related deaths. Americans are advised to roll up their sleeves and get a flu shot this year. The fall and the winter of 2020 and 2021 are going to be the, probably one of the most difficult times that we've experienced in American public health. That's because of a double threat, the flu and COVID-19. Although some parts of the U.S. are seeing new coronavirus cases drop. Unfortunately, 
we're already at a much higher level than we were uh, in the weeks before the July 4th holiday. So I don't think it'll take much to really bring us back up to 70,000 new cases a day. Medical experts are working on a COVID-19 vaccine, and the White House says it may be ready before the end of the year. We're going to have a vaccine very soon, maybe even before a very special date. You know what date I'm talking about. Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden is leery about the president's claim. He said so many things that aren't true. I'm worried if we do have a really good vaccine, people are going to be reluctant to take it. Experts say a vaccine is unlikely before 2021, and health officials stress the importance of staying vigilant. Many of the physical distancing and public health and social measures that have been put in place, which keep keeps people apart, uh, may have actually uh, played a role in reducing circulation of influenza. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Bruce Williamson, former lead singer of The Temptations, has died of coronavirus. The 49-year-old died Sunday night at Mountain View Hospital in Las Vegas, according to his business manager. Williamson was with The Temptations for nearly 10 years, having replaced G.C. Cameron in the legendary Motown group. Temptations sold tens of millions of albums with hits like My Girl and Get Ready. Otis Williams, the only original member of the current Temptations lineup, said, quote, we mourn the loss of one of our brothers. And here at home, we have an update. You may remember hearing about Carlos Muniz last month when he married the love of his life while at Methodist Hospital battling COVID. Now Carlos is on the road to recovery. He is enjoying life with his wife and family by his side at home. Carlos Muniz was released from the hospital this weekend after battling COVID-19 since July. Although he is back home, Carlos is still on oxygen. He is also learning how to walk again. I think it was twice that they said that they that they didn't think I was going to live through the nights. And, uh, but I made it just through the, the grace of God, you know, and all the prayer and everything like that, that, that everyone did. It's, it's been hard, but, but it's, it's just so exciting to have him home. And again, while hospitalized, Carlos was able to say, I do, thanks to a group of thoughtful hospital workers. He says that day was perfect. Right now, KSAT.com, you may have seen his media posts lately alleging his legacy and relationship with Tejano singer Selena Quintanilla was being erased. Later, Chris Petta has apologized, saying he acted out of character in recent days. He has since deleted the post, which apparently referenced the Selena Museum in Corpus Christi. So what's creating all the confusion? Selena's sister, Suzette, and Chris Petta has addressed the issue. We have a whole article on our website at KSAT.com. And time now is 537 and 76 degrees. Still ahead, a Serbian tennis champ been fined after striking a ball that hit a, a line judge during the U.S. Open. It was the big sports news over the weekend, and we're still talking about it this morning. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, 76 degrees. We are seeing rain. We're excited about that. And maybe we're going to see change in temperatures. We're going to check in with Justin. We'll be right back. Five forty today, a handful of various school districts will begin to slowly bring students back to the classroom. Some teachers, parents and students are saying some schools are not ready for face to face instruction. Our Sarah Costa is live near downtown. Now, Sarah, what was the message from some of these local educators? Good morning, Mark and Stephanie and some educators. Their message is that their schools are not ready to meet the challenge of in person learning. That was the message from the coalition of San Antonio reopening up uh, San Antonio coalition on school reopening out of demonstration yesterday. The coalition, which consists of students, parents, community members, teachers and nonprofit organizations held a demonstration yesterday saying local districts lack PPE equipment and air condition filters and have aged HVAC systems. Wanda Longoria, the president of the Northside American Federation of Teachers, said it is critical for districts to allocate funding to improve systems for healthy air quality. The coalition is also asking city and district leaders to make sure schools are in compliance with Metro Health's directive and to keep schools closed until safety protocols are in place. This as SAISD, Northside ISD, Northeast Side ISD and Alamo Heights will slowly begin in-person learning today. Now, Metro Health has required that all schools list all of their COVID-19 data on their websites and update them regularly. This, as Metro Health's directive says that the county's positivity rate for COVID-19 has dropped just below 10%, moving that school safety indicator to the moderate level, which is right underneath that high level. 
Reporting live near downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Time now, 542 and 76 degrees. Up next, more details on why tennis champ Novak Djokovic is now having to defend the lineswoman. He accidentally hit with a ball during the U.S. Open. In your morning consumer headlines, T-Mobile is offering free internet to millions of students who might not otherwise be connected. The program is called Project 10 Million and it's a partnership with schools. The more than $10 billion initiative will provide free wireless hotspots and high-speed data, as well as laptops and tablets. T-Mobile notes some 50 million students are learning from home now. It says the idea is to make sure technology gaps do not cause achievement gaps. Black Panther comics are free for the moment on Comixology, a cloud-based platform owned by Amazon. It follows the untimely death of actor Chadwick Boseman on August 28th, who was the star of Marvel's movie version of the character. While Comixology costs about $6 a month, a subscription is not necessary to get the free Black Panther titles. All you need is an Amazon login. While fans would like to say Wakanda forever, it's not clear how long the free offer is going to last. Well, a new fallout this morning for Novak Djokovic. The tennis stars tossed from the U.S. Open after accidentally hitting the line judge with a ball. Now he's facing another fine and he's defending the judge who's being attacked online. ABC's Megan Tavrizian has the details. This morning, the on-court outburst from the world's top tennis player getting more costly. Novak Djokovic slapped with an additional $7,500 fine for skipping his post-match news conference, bringing his total losses to more than 267,000. Game, Karen Yogusta. The fines and lost winnings stem from this moment Sunday at the U.S. Open, when Djokovic accidentally struck a line judge in the throat after hitting a ball out of frustration. <gasps> Djokovic, stunned, immediately apologizing to the line judge. But minutes later, the U.S. Tennis Association throwing him out of the Grand Slam for dangerous or reckless actions with negligent disregard of the consequences. He was the favorite to win the U.S. Open. The referee and the staff did a great job of not taking into account his stature. I think for the 128th ranked player, that gives them clarity and it makes them feel empowered that they would have all been treated the same. The line judge now getting death threats. Djokovic taking to social media, asking fans to stop going after the judge, saying she needs our community's support too. She's done nothing wrong at all. Tennis great Serena Williams, who famously argued with an umpire about a coaching penalty in the U.S. Open two years ago, yeah, it, declining to comment. I'm not going to touch that. I'm going to leave that to you guys. I'm just not touching it. John McEnroe, famous for his on-court antics, calling it a rookie mistake, but predicting Djokovic will now be labeled a bad guy. The pressure just got to him. He's going to be the bad guy the rest of his career. Certainly, I know from some experience that you got to be careful out there. Djokovic may have lost more than $267,000 over this incident, but he's already won $4 million this year and earned more than $140 million over the course of his career. Megan Tavrizian, ABC News, San Diego. Okay, just thinking out loud, how could it be a rookie mistake if he's a legendary player that's been at the top of the rankings for years? Right. I don't know, Mr. McEnroe, mm, I'm not sure. Not good. 547, <laughs> 76 degrees. Let's go ahead and check your roads with Officer Nick Solis. I know we had a couple of accidents earlier. Yeah, they keep coming in, Steph, right now. We have another accident. This is going to be northbound U.S. Highway 281 North at East Hildebrand Avenue. It's a one-vehicle accident there. A vehicle hit the guardrail. Uh, it's going to cause a little bit of traffic delay if you are heading northbound on 281 right there towards the quarry area. All right, this accident still working on this is northbound I-35 South at US Highway 90. Now this is blocking the whole right lane and if you are trying to get on 35 northbound from uh from I-10 going west, you cannot. It is blocked off right now uh, there. Uh, you're going to have to either maybe exit to 37 and come cut across Commerce to get back to 35 somehow. All right, so here it is. This right here, this is I-10 at 35. This is that I-10 ramp to 35 closed down. And then we're going to show you right now 281 at uh, almost right there at Hildren. Uh, one vehicle accident blocking that right lane there on those northbound lanes. Please be careful, everybody. These roadways are slick this morning, and there has been a lot of accidents. So please wear your seatbelt and drive safely. Uh, Justin, I guess that there's some good news, at least for now. The showers are starting to move out of our viewing area. 
Yeah, well, at least they're moving to the north and east okay. of San Antonio. There's still some shower activity out there. Nothing that's very heavy, but it's enough to cause some issues on the roads, obviously. And you see the sort of strip of rain here that is moving north and east. So places like Luling, Gonzales, Seguin, you're getting some shower activity right now. And this will continue to move off to the north and east. I still think we'll see some more showers and storms a little bit later this afternoon. But this is sort of the tip of the iceberg, if you will, because the pattern is becoming much more active and the rain chances look pretty good over the next few days. Let's talk about this cold front. It's been a topic of conversation for several days now. We do know that it will be warm today. Temperatures will make it into the 90s uh, and 80s around the area. And then as this front progresses south, and this is a strong front for September, by the way. It's sort of rare to get these numbers this cold in September. But here we are, especially early September. Look at the numbers out west tomorrow. Potentially 40s and 50s for highs. That's just how strong this front is. But uh, tomorrow we're still in the warm air, warm and muggy. It looks like this front's going to try to slip through Thursday morning and at least give us some slightly cooler air. It's not going to be like they're seeing up in the panhandle, but it will bring about some changes. And on top of all that, we're going to have some good rain chances to deal with because of this front, because of an upper, of an upper level low off to our west. You see some of the showers this morning. That's about it across the state of Texas. But you go north, you'll run into some snow there in the higher elevations, Casper down to Denver. This is some good snowfall, and it just shows you how cold that air is. These are places that we're looking at 90s, if not triple digits, just a couple days ago. But now the numbers are in the 50s and 30s, 37 in Denver, 31 in Casper. So that cold air is now spilling down the Rocky Mountains and spilling down the plains. Uh, outside for us right now, we've got uh, cloudy skies, still a little bit of rain coming down, 76 at the airport. South southeast Julie winds at about 9. Winds will be a little bit breezy today. And look for uh, numbers to be in the 70s this morning and then eventually warm their way into the 90s this afternoon. But most everybody is in the 70s right now with some sort of cloud cover out there, if not a little bit of rain. Futurecast shows us that uh, we'll get to scatter showers and storms. This is noontime today. And then as we get into the afternoon, maybe a little bit more widespread. We have it pegged at about a 40% chance of rain. Then as we get into tomorrow, it does become more widespread, especially as you get up into the hill country, Edwards Plateau. That's where we could see some thunderstorms. We're not anticipating severe weather, but there could be some pockets of heavier rain. And as that front gets a little bit closer, widespread showers and a few thunderstorms will be in place. There is going to be some concern here about some pockets of heavier rain, as we mentioned. And I'll step out of the way here. You see the five to seven inch potentially uh, area there out around Del Rio and Eagle Pass. This is over five days. So we're talking through Saturday here, so it's not going to all come at once. But this gives you a general idea that as you go west of I-35, that's where we're going to see some of the bigger rainfall totals with this system. So the forecast for today up around 92, a 20 percent chance of rain early. We go to a 40 percent chance this afternoon and then a 70 percent chance tomorrow. As far as those cooler temperatures go, 78 on Thursday. Now if this front makes a little more progress to the south, that number could go down even more. If it stalls out a little bit, we may have to push that number up. But that's what we're shooting for right now. And overnight lows would slip into the 60s in many spots and then it will warm back up by the weekend with some more chances for rain. It's so bizarre to be done with Labor Day and and mm -hmm. see 70s for highs on the map already. That's just crazy to me. It's 2020 it, man. <laughs> That's the way it's going. It's yeah. great and I'm loving the 60s in the morning. Yes. <laughs> Thank you Justin. Thank you sir. Right now it's 552 76 degrees and lots of potential health problems can arise from eating or drinking too much added sugar. Coming up next we're going to take a look at ways you can slash sugar from your diet. Let's take a look at lottery numbers. Pick three, eight, zero, zero, fireball five, daily four, two, three, four, six, fireball seven. Cash five, three, five, nine, thirty, thirty three, and your Texas two step, four, fourteen, nineteen, twenty three, twenty four. Quitting sugar isn't easy. You need it every hour or so, and then you become controlled by it. Health and wellness coach Stephanie Mansour says, don't quit all at once. Do not quit cold turkey. That's tip number one. Don't set yourself up for failure by thinking that you can just eliminate sugar completely from your diet. Tip two, purge your pantry. Check out the ingredients. Make sure that the ingredients are all items that you can see and pronounce. You don't want anything artificial in your foods in the pantry, in the fridge, or in the freezer. And slowly sever your love of soda. If you're addicted to a couple cans a day, that's okay. We're gonna start by just drinking half and then dumping the other half off. 
or replacing it with some sparkling water. Next, crush your cravings. Make sure that you're stabilizing your blood sugar levels every few hours with protein and veggies. And remember, water works. Whenever a craving strikes for sugar, have a glass or a water bottle full of water first and then see if you still want the sugar. Finally, grab nature's candy for your sweet tooth. Fruit. When you have a sugar craving, instead of reaching for candy or something that's been highly processed, grab a piece of fruit. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Coming up later today on SA Live, Animal World Snake Farm in New Braunfels sent a crew to Louisiana to help with the cleanup following Hurricane Laura. Mike Ostrage talked with one of the teamers, the team members they sent over. Don't want to miss this amazing story about how this incredible group of local reptile and animal lovers devoted their time to help others in need. Make sure you turn into SA Live later today at 1 right here on KSAT 12. Well, it's easy to be fooled about which foods are actually healthy and which ones aren't. Ahead in the next hour of Good Morning San Antonio, we'll reveal some other common myths about what is actually bad for you to eat. And we've had wet roads in some spots around town. There was one at 10 and Frio. 10 at UTSA Boulevard appears to be drying out. We'll get an update on traffic and weather next right here on GMSA. Today, a handful of districts will have students and teachers back on their campuses. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. In just a bit, we'll tell you which districts are having their students return and what today will look like. Police looking for three people involved in an overnight stabbing and robbery. They say the suspects ran away on the southwest side, leaving a man with stab wounds to the lower back. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, it is 76 degrees. We got some rain this morning. We're probably going to get more throughout the day and throughout the week. We're going to check in with Justin in just a bit. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Up and Adam, back to work, back to school. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, September 8th. Happy Tuesday. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a great extended weekend. And if you didn't enjoy rain over the weekend, now may be the chance. That's right. We've got wet roads in some spots. We've had some showers off and on this morning. We saw a few sprinkles on the way into work yes, this morning did. ourselves. Yeah, a lot of the showers starting to wind down here in San Antonio for now. So as you go off to school this morning, you'll probably be able to, to miss out on most of the rain. But have the umbrella with you today just in case. Uh, I think we'll see some more showers and storms as we get into the afternoon. You look at the radar right now. Those light showers starting to move up I-35. So places like New Braunfels, Seguin, and Luling, uh, now through Gonzales. Also seeing a little bit of light rain around Bernie this morning. It's all very light, uh, but we are expecting to get better rain chances next couple days. Here's the bus stop forecast. Temperatures will be in the mid-70s this morning, 30% chance of showers. And then this afternoon when you get home from school, 40% chance of scattered showers. Maybe a couple thunderstorms out there. Temperature is still hot today in the low 90s. And here's what the uh, forecast looks like. Uh, again, 30% chance to about noontime and then a 40% chance this afternoon. Some cooler temperatures on the way too, I think. We're still tracking this cold front, which has been a forecast headache, I might add. We're going to have more on that and let you know what it means for our forecast going forward. Again, some good rain chances ahead. But let's check in on the roadways now. Nick? How are things looking? I know it was busy earlier. It's still busy, Justin, but those two accidents we had earlier are now cleared up. That's going to be the one on Hildebrand and 281 and the one on 35 and 90. So 10 West, the, the IH10 westbound ramp to 35 North is now open and the right lane of 35 North just past US 90 is open as well. Things are clear there. We do have this accident though. This is going to be Harry Wurzbach and uh, Northeast Loop 410 access road just came out right now. Shouldn't cause too much traffic delays, but just keep it in mind if you have to head in that direction. All right, drive times 10 westbound I 10 westbound from the northwest side of IH 35 to 1604. You got a 12 minute ride, and if you're going I 10 eastbound from the northwest side of 1604 to I 35, 13 minutes. Really good times there. All right, taking a look outside at Trans Guy 281 at Grayson, looking good now, nice and clear, flowing very smoothly there. We have a uh, 410 at Fredericksburg. That looks great. 410 at Austin Highway in the northeast side looking good. And I-10 at Callahan East. That looks great there. Roadway still could be a little slick, though, so please wear your seatbelt and get to work safely. Mark, Stephanie? Thank you, Nick. Today, many school districts across our viewing area will resume in-person learning after the majority of them have been doing remote learning since mid-August. Our Sarah Costa is live outside of Mar Hill Elementary at SAISD Elementary School. And Sarah, what will today look like for most of these schools? 
Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. And it'll look like with very few students actually back on campus, most of these stu uh, school districts will be slowly phasing in having their students back on campus for in-person learning in districts like SAISD. The majority of those students returning for in-person learning will be at the elementary level. The districts returning for in-person learning include SAISD, Northside ISD, Northeast Side ISD, and Alamo Heights ISD. This after the county's COVID-19 positivity rate has dipped below 10%, allowing the school safety indicator to improve from high to moderate, which allows schools to begin bringing students back on campus. Now, SAISD says only 10% of students are allowed to return and classes will be limited to six students. For those students whose parents have given consent, they will prioritize student return by focusing on those who will benefit most from in-person learning. Now, NISD, the district, will begin some in-person instruction starting today with a transition planned out. Northeast IISD says up to five students will be allowed in each class during the first phase. Special needs students as well as children of working parents will be prioritized first and the rest would be chosen in a lottery system done campus by campus. Alamo Heights says students in Alamo Heights will begin phasing in starting today and teachers will also return to campuses to teach and work on we're starting work today as well and you can of course find all of these full plans on ksat.com now according to saisd superintendent dr pedro martinez they said the majority of their students will be from the elementary level that will be turning prioritizing students from pre-k to second grade they said they've overall been successful with virtual learning but the students that are struggling most are typically the younger ones Reporting live near downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Morgan Stephanie. New this morning, police looking for several suspects. They say robbed and stabbed a man overnight. It happened at the 300 block of Hollenbeck around 11 last night. That's near Quintana Road at Bynum on the southwest side. Officers say a woman knocked on the victim's door, but when he opened it, two men ran in. While taking some things from his apartment, one of the suspects stabbed the victim in the lower back. All three ran away. Police say the man only suffered minor injuries and is expected to recover. San Antonio and UTSA police are investigating a rollover crash on the northwest side. They say it happened around 1.30 this morning on Babcock near UTSA Boulevard. When officers arrived, they found the passenger in the car, but the driver had already run off. That passenger was not injured, but police say he is not answering any questions about what led up to the crash at this time. San Antonio Police and Crime Stoppers asking for your help finding two suspects who pulled a gun on a cashier over a can of iced tea. They say it happened back on, on August 25th at a 7-Eleven at Southeast Military and Roosevelt Avenue. They say when the cashier asked them to pay for the drink, one of them pulled out a gun. They both drove off in a black and white Dodge Challenger. If you have any information, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. Local health officials will give us an update on the numbers of COVID-19 cases in San Antonio this afternoon. They did not update us yesterday because of the holiday. Currently, the numbers show 978 people have died in Bear County, and there have been nearly 50,000 cases of the virus since the pandemic began. About half of all cases have been people between the ages of 18 and 40, and right now the seven-day average is at 157 cases per day. Governor Greg Abbott extending his disaster declaration for the entire state in response to COVID-19. The declaration originally issued back on March 13th. The governor says the declaration will help provide resources to areas that need it most and help fund relief efforts. He's also urging everyone to continue wearing a mask and properly distance themselves from one another. The parents of a teen who was shot and killed during an argument on Sunday night say they're hoping their son's death will encourage others to get on the right path. Stacy and Jim Harrison say they were devastated to learn their son, 16-year-old Ian Harrison, died while hanging out at a Northside apartment complex. San Antonio police say Ian Harrison and a 17-year-old suspect got into a fight over a gun and Ian was shot. His parents say they hoped their son would get back on the right track after suffering from drug addiction after his brother died years ago. They say they want other teens to learn that gun violence is not the answer. 
if you have something a beef about someone just fight it out like you used to you know why are you bringing guns in and it takes away people forever and it changes everybody's life yeah. that is involved and they just yeah. don't understand the impact until it, it it'll happen to them one day you know maybe maybe not but they might lose someone close and it's devastating and the family tells us that Ian's friends plan to have a candlelight vigil at 8 p.m. tonight at the Converse City Park on School Street. 608, 76 degrees. Wildfires continue to burn out west, setting records for the number of acres burned in a single year. We'll get a look at just how much damage the fires are causing and how hard they are to contain. No basketball right now, but uh, that doesn't mean AT&T Center is going to be silent. Starting next month, you can vote early at one of the county's mega voting sites. We'll learn more about the election initiative after the break. And taking a look outside with live cam, 76 degrees and earlier this morning, Mark and I both saw rain driving into work, but maybe the rain is not there right now, but those roads still slick, so you're gonna need to watch out. We're gonna check in with Nick and Justin after the break. And welcome back at 612. The AT&T Center is expected to have people back inside its doors next month, but it will not be for basketball games. Home of the Spurs will be used as one of the county mega voting sites. RJ Marquez has a preview of what you can expect. The AT&T Center will have a different look this fall. It will be transformed from a place for cheering Spurs fans to a mega voting center. Even before the NBA agreed to use its arenas as polling places, Bear County, which owns the AT&T Center and Spurs Sports and Entertainment, were working on a plan. Um, we actually had had conversations with the Spurs and their general counsel, Bobby Bett, is going back to probably uh, May. County Commissioner Justin Rodriguez said one of the main ideas behind using the AT&T Center came down to keeping voters safe during a pandemic. Could we potentially use that as a mega site um, for maximizing spacing? You know that uh, there's going to be long lines whether you go early or wait till election day. Well, you've got we've got to keep that six feet of distance between folks in line and those that are that are voting. The AT&T Center is one of four mega voting sites expected to be announced soon. The sites will be spread across the city with the hopes of increasing voter turnout. The idea of putting you know up to 50 or 75 voting machines at each of those mega centers, making sure they have uh, accessible parking, ADA access. Um, all the things I think uh, bus line access is another thing we need. While the final game plan for the AT&T Center is still in the works, Rodriguez said there will be no shortage of personal protective equipment for election workers. The Spurs have also offered to extend voting hours and possibly have some of their employees take part. They are, uh, I think, ultimately um, always about community and they're always about making sure uh, particularly people are engaged in, um, in in civic awareness. The county typically has somewhere around 35 early voting sites, but would like to get closer to 50 to give voters as many options as possible. This initiative with the AT&T Center is a key part of that, especially for underserved communities and voter access. No uh, the history of uh, voter disenfran disenfranchisement in, in our community, not just here, but everywhere. The better access we have, the more we get the word out, the more polls we have available, the longer hours we have, it gives everyone an opportunity to get out and express um, you know, their voice. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. Right now it's exactly 615. And earlier, Officer Nick was tracking a couple of accidents. Are they still there? No, not there anymore. I was pretty busy there for the time being, but right now just dealing with one accident on the screen. It's going to be eastbound Northeast Loop 410, the access road at Harry Wurzbach Road. Things are looking uh, pretty good there, though. Not No traffic buildup, so that's always good news. All right, outside of the trans guy, 35 at US 90, looking good. Now, this is where the accident that Step was talking about was at earlier, 281 and almost. We had another accident there. That looks clear and smooth as selling, and uh, 150 and 410 traffic picking up there definitely but still looks very good and uh flow is good good news and, and some of the street lights looks like the roads have tried to just dry out in many places this I, morning i can see the difference from mm -hmm. what was about uh, 4 30 mm -hmm. to till about now that's right are, we're not done with the rain quite yet are we justin no this is just sort of the start of it I, I think we'll see just some light stuff today that's what we saw about an hour ago here in san antonio but there is more chances on the way for some showers and storms maybe some heavy rain down the line very quickly, we got to talk about the tropics. Over the weekend, we had Paulette and Renee, the earliest P storm, the earliest R storm that we've had ever. Uh, so here we go. It's been a really busy year. If we got another name storm, it would be Sally. And we very easily could get through all of these names this year and go into the Greek alphabet when it comes to uh, tropical cyclone names. So just a heads up there. By the way, Paulette 
And uh, Renee, no threat to land at this point. They're way out in the Atlantic. Looking at the radar right now, we've got some showers coming through uh, northern parts of Bear County, now moving into Comal County and sweeping through Seguin at this hour. Let's zoom in a little bit closer to the uh, radar here in San Antonio. And you can see these showers are now north of Garden Ridge for the most part, moving through New Braunfels. So there's going to be some wet roads there, uh, maybe a little bit wet as you head towards the uh, bus stop this morning if you are headed to school. Boulverde, same story also around Bernie. Seeing some showers and storms or showers, I should say, at this hour. No storms out there, but we could see a couple this afternoon. Take a look at the future cast as we go forward in time here. This is around noon today. Some showers around and it may be a little bit more numerous as we get into the afternoon. Right now we have it pegged at about a 40% chance of rain today. And then as we get into tomorrow, those rain chances go up. We'll be watching for frontal boundaries shifting in and we've also got an upper level low off to our west. So this should enhance our rain chances, especially out to the west where we could see some pockets of heavy rain. This is seven o'clock tomorrow evening and it looks like we should see some fairly widespread rain outside right now. 76 degrees south southeast chilly winds at about 11. Look for winds to be a little bit breezy today and temperatures generally in the 70s. It's a fairly warm morning, warm and muggy. 77 in Gonzales, 77 in Kennedy, 75 right now in Carrizo Springs. So we've got the showers here around South Texas, but I want to take you up north. Places like Wyoming, seeing snow this morning. It was in the 90s here just a couple days ago. So this gives you an indication of how cold this area is coming out of Canada. Fairly rare for early September. And it looks like we could get a taste of it. It's 30 right now in Casper, 37 in Denver, and the numbers starting to fall across the Texas Panhandle. 71 right now in Amarillo, but that may soon change with this front coming through. Take a look at the numbers as this front slides south. As we get into tomorrow afternoon, we're talking highs in the 40s and 50s potentially out west. These numbers may be a little cold here, but a bottom line. It is going to be a big change, and we think that some of this cooler air may eventually work into South Texas by Thursday morning, including here in San Antonio. It's going to be a close call, but I think that we will feel it a little bit and temperatures will come down some, especially Thursday afternoon. You'll notice the difference. Here's a look at the rain chances today. 30% chance the noontime will up it to a 40% chance this afternoon. We're still in the low 90s for high temperatures. And then look for 86 tomorrow, 70 or 70% 70 chance of rain, 78 Thursday. That's the high temperature, 60% chance of showers. And then we do warm up with some more rain chances as we get towards the weekend. Overnight lows right now, we have them in the mid 60s. Should that front work all the way through, we may get to lower those numbers too. It'll be an interesting next couple days, guys. Exciting. Yes, not quite a hot chocolate morning or two, but we're <laughs> headed in the right direction. It's better. It's better. We are 619 76 degrees and Labor Day weekend might be over, but some of the sales are just getting started. We're going to take a look at some of the best deals in today's GMA first look. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. Crafting lasting fragrances begins in nature. Airwick scented oils are infused with natural essential oils for fragrance day after day, up to 60 days. Airwick scented oils connect to nature. Down there, care with Cottonelle. Down there, because you're all over your overall wellness. So hashtag treat yourself with the cleaning ripples of Cottonelle toilet paper and flushable wipes. The refreshingly clean routine that leaves you feeling ah, inside and out care. Down there, care with Cottonelle. My new normal, fewer asthma attacks. Less oral steroids. Taking my treatment at home. Nucala is a once monthly add-on injection for severe eosinophilic asthma, not for sudden breathing problems. Allergic reactions can occur. Get help right away for swelling of face, mouth, tongue, or trouble breathing. Infections that can cause shingles have occurred. Don't stop steroids unless told by your doctor. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection. May cause headache, injection site reactions, back pain, and fatigue. Ask your doctor about Nucala at home. Find your new normal with Nucala. In this morning's GMA First Look, Labor Day might be over, but the sales are just getting started. Everyone is going to be shopping earlier because they don't know what's going to come in the next couple months. There might be another lockdown. So people are going to be getting their gifts earlier. The next savings event is the big one, Black Friday. And let me tell you, it's going to be weird this year. Why? Because as brick and mortar sales have dwindled or disappeared during lockdown, online sales have boomed. 
there were shutdowns and they had a lot of merchandise. So instead of just moving that merchandise out, they're putting that out on deep discount so people can actually purchase them. So where can you find these big fall deals? We'll have everything you need to know to save big coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Becky Worley, ABC News, Oakland, California. 25 major wildfires burning across the state of California, including the massive Creek Fire near Fresno. It's burned over 80,000 acres in four days, and none of it is contained. Conditions worsening due to record high temperatures, dry winds, and an infestation of bark beetles, which killed the trees. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the latest. This morning, firefighters across California are battling dozens of wildfires fueled by record-breaking heat. One of the largest fires outside Fresno exploded overnight to 135,000 acres with 0% containment after already burning dozens of homes in the town of Big Creek. Monday night, the California National Guard attempted another rescue using a military Chinook helicopter after reports of 14 hikers trapped at a mountain resort. But authorities said the mission was unsuccessful because heavy smoke prevented the pilots from making a safe landing. Unlike this successful rescue over the weekend, when a helicopter pulled hundreds of people to safety as flames surrounded them at a campsite. Some of them were in critical condition with burns or broken bones. To get aircraft to fly at night into the mountains is, is um, really something else. And now concerns about the extreme fire danger spreading to other states. In Colorado, a wildfire north of Denver is now the largest in state history, burning nearly 100,000 acres. And in Oregon, the air quality deteriorating as rare east winds funnel smoke in from multiple fires. One of those fires burning near Spokane, Washington. Authorities say a up to 80% of the homes in the town of Malden have been destroyed by a fire sweeping through the area. This resident posting a picture of the fire, writing, the entire town is gone. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. And here's another way to grasp just how severe the wildfires have been out west. The Clean Air Coalition, which is a partnership of governments, organizations, and scientific institutions, rating air quality near the fire. So all of the red dots show areas where the air quality is unhealthy, and the more purplish dots show air quality that is very unhealthy. For perspective, the air quality is nearly two times worse than some of the world's most polluted cities, such as Delhi, India, or Beijing, China. Wow. Okay. 626, 76 degrees on your Tuesday morning. And for many students around San Antonio, today will be their first day returning to a classroom. We'll go over what you should expect as in-person learning resumes in our next half hour. If you could get paid to deactivate your Facebook app, would you do it? We'll see how much Facebook is offering to pay users as part of a new election study. And a quick check of your roads with Trans Guide. There's I-35 Loop 16 of 4 and 35 Evans Road. Looks to be flowing smoothly right now. We'll check in with Nick Solis after the break. A southwest side man opens the door to trouble. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. He told police he answered a knock on his door and was robbed. I'll tell you more about it. Today, a handful of area districts will be having teachers and students return to their campuses for in-person learning. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta, and just a bit why a group of teachers and parents say some local schools are not ready. The final stretch of the campaign season already heating up. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington with the latest from the campaign trail just ahead. And if you're just now waking up outside with live cam, we've had some showers in the overnight hours and the forecast is anything but boring over the next week or so. And good morning to you. It is Tuesday, September 8th. Thanks for joining us this morning. You have a rhyme going. Showers in the overnight hours. Like poetry over there. Thank you. It was, an, nice. it was accidental poetry. <laughs> it sounded great. Also <laughs> sounds great to actually have those showers in cooler temps. That's right. Front still on the way. Yep. And uh, you were throwing out some amazing statistics during the break at places like Denver, Colorado, where temperatures have plummeted and snow has set in. Yeah, they were so they were at 101 a couple days ago. Now we're going to be in the 30s today. There's potential for snow. The earliest snowfall, I want to say in like 20 or 30 years. Wow. And it just gives you an idea of uh, how sort of rare this air mass is. It's coming down the Rocky Mountains. And yes, it is headed towards South Texas. I think we at least get a taste of it as we get into Thursday. It's not going to be a huge cool down here, but it will be a little bit of a shock to the system considering we've been in the triple digits ourselves for 
what feels like several months. Uh, live radar shows we've got some light showers out there. Most of the uh, steady rain has moved through San Antonio at this point. It is lifting north to San Marcos, New Braunfels, but there are some light showers behind that. So don't be surprised if you run into a few sprinkles out there. A little closer look here at Bear County. You see some of the rain now lifting north up there around Bolverde. A couple of light returns down around Palo Alto College in on the uh, south side there of San Antonio. Uh, temperature wise, we talked about those cold numbers. 37 right now, Denver, 46 Salt Lake City, 30 up there in Casper. This is that cold air spilling south. Really some impressive numbers. And I just checked some of the observations there around Amarillo. Front starting to move through there. So it is starting now to move into Texas and it will provide some cooler air certainly for those folks across North Texas today. For us, it's still hot. We're thinking 92 for a high temperature. We'll call for about a 30% chance of rain through the first half today, 40% chance for the second half. And we'll talk much more about that front coming up here in just a few minutes. But we got to talk traffic now. It was busy earlier. We had some wet roads, things improving some. I say they're improving, Justin, but still have some more accidents to report here right now. So if I had to say the roadways are still a little slick out there, please be careful. We've had a number of accidents this morning. All right, we're dealing with this accident right here. Westbound US Highway 90 West at 36th Street at Southwest at 36th Street. This is going towards SeaWorld there on the main lanes. Accident's been there for about 30 minutes or so. Shouldn't be causing too much traffic buildup. I don't see anything on Transguide there. All right, working on this one. Eastbound Northeast Loop 410 Access Road at Harry Wurzbach Road. Uh, hopefully they get that one cleared up soon. Uh, drive times 10 eastbound from FM 46 to 1604. You got a 39 minute ride. And if you're I 10 eastbound from the northwest side of 1604 to IH 35, 13 minutes. Really good times there. Taking a look outside of Trans Guy 35 in Benzinga. That's looking good. 35 at 410. Ah, flowing smoothly. Looks great right now. And we have uh, 35 at 1604 on the far north side. That looks great as well. All right, everyone, please wear your seatbelts and get to work safely. Stephanie. Thank you, Nick. And answering a knock on his door has cost a southwest side man some of his belongings and even a little bit of his blood. San Antonio police say he was cut on his back during a late night home invasion in a neighborhood off Quintana Road. Our Katrina Rubber is at public safety headquarters with a live report. Now, Katrina, have police made any progress in finding the robbers? Not as far as I know. The last update we had was that they had not made any arrests. It also did not include much of a description of the robbers either. Well, the victim told police that he believes there were three people in all who showed up at his home in the 300 block of Hollenbeck near Quintana Road late last night. He says a woman initially knocked on his door around 11 last night. Then when he opened it, two men forced their way inside saying they were going to take his stuff. At some point, the victim was cut on his back, but it looks like paramedics were able to treat him at the scene for that injury. Police say the robbers got away with some of the man's belongings and again, no arrests so far. Reporting live from Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thanks, Katrina. Today, some school districts in the area will slowly begin to bring some students and teachers back on campus after Metro Health gave the green light. However, some teachers, parents and students are saying some schools are not ready for face to face instruction. Our Sarah Costa is live near downtown. Now, Sarah, what are some of their concerns? All right, she is saying, as we are apparently having some audio difficulties, that some educators are warning that schools are not equipped to meet the challenge. The message from the San Antonio Coalition on School Reopenings. The coalition, which consists of students, parents, community members, teachers, and nonprofit organizations, held a demonstration yesterday saying that local districts lack personal protective equipment and air conditioned filters and have aged HVAC systems. That's right. As a matter of fact, all those campuses will require students and teachers to wear masks at all times with social distancing in place. If you head to KSAT.com, you can see a full list of area districts that are planning to return to classes. Now, moving on. We are less than two months away from the presidential election. And both candidates are on the campaign trail in key battleground states across the country. ABC's Faith Abube has the latest. We're now in the final stretch of the campaign season and both candidates are on the attack. 
Happy President Christmas. Donald Happy Trump Christmas. delivering an insult fueled campaign stump speech from the northern steps of the White House on Labor Day. And Biden's a stupid person. You know that. Stepping up attacks on his political rival, Joe Biden, as he announced yet another big surprise on the way in the fight for a COVID-19 vaccine. So we're going to have a vaccine very soon, maybe even before a very special date. On the campaign trail in Pennsylvania, Biden hitting back at Trump's handling of the pandemic. He didn't have the guts to take on COVID and threw up the white flag. At the small socially distanced gathering, Biden telling union supporters he, not Trump, would be better at digging the U.S. out of a slumped economy. The only thing standing in the way of us getting for people to be in a position where they actually have the ability to make a decent wage is to make sure that we uh, remove the guy who's there right now. Both candidates still talking about those bombshell allegations published in the Atlantic magazine last Thursday, accusing Trump of disparaging service members wounded and killed at war. The president still blasting the Atlantic piece as a, quote, phony made up story and then saying this about the current military leadership. I'm not saying the military is in love with me. The soldiers are. The top people in the Pentagon probably aren't because they want to do nothing but fight wars so that all of those wonderful companies that make the bombs and make the planes and make everything else stay happy. And the president heads to Winston-Salem, North Carolina today, where the county GOP chair is calling on Trump to wear a mask when he arrives for his airport rally, adding, quote, there is no excuse. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. In other headlines this morning, Congress will return from its recess starting today. Before Congress adjourned in August, Democratic and Republican lawmakers were unable to reach a compromise on another coronavirus relief package. Some plans call for another round of $1,200 stimulus checks, help to schools across the country, and restoring unemployment benefits. However, neither party has been able to agree on a price tag for the next round of aid. Bruce Williamson, a former lead singer of The Temptations, has died from the coronavirus. Williamson was with The Temptations for nearly 10 years, having replaced G.C. Cameron in the legendary Motown group. The Temptations sold tens of millions of albums with hits like My Girl and Get Ready. Williamson left the group in 2015 to focus on soul and gospel music. Otis Williams, the only original member in the current Temptations lineup, said, quote, we mourn the loss of one of our brothers, unquote. Williamson was 49 years Years old. Facebook will reportedly pay some of its users to quit using its app for a while. It's part of a study on the impact of social media on political attitudes and behaviors during the upcoming election. Selected users would deactivate their Facebook or Instagram accounts later this month. The accounts will be inactive for either one or six weeks, and some users would then have to take a survey before their accounts are reactivated. Reports say users could be paid up to $120. Black Panther comics are free for the moment on Comixology, a cloud-based platform owned by Amazon. It comes after the untimely death of Chadwick Boseman on August 28th, star of Marvel's movie version. While Comixology costs about $6 a month, a subscription is not necessary to get the free Black Panther titles. All you need is an Amazon login. Although Wakanda is forever, it is not clear how long the free offer is going to last. I have a huge box full of old comics, and I know I have Black Panther in there somewhere. I need Do to go look really? and see oh. which which numbers they are, you know, early on yeah. in the release, hopefully. That's pretty cool. You need to take a pic and, and post it so you yep. all can see. I will. 639, 76 degrees. And it's easy to be fooled about which foods are healthy and which ones are not. After the break, we're going to bust some common myths about what is actually bad for you to eat. Six forty-three. It's pretty clear when offered the choice between a chocolate bar and a carrot stick, which is the healthier choice. But most of the time, the choice is more subtle, like choosing between white sugar and sugar in the raw. Chocolate bar every time, right? Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and many times, the one you think is healthier is simply because of marketing. It's called the healthy food halo effect, or foods you think are good for you, but they actually are not. Max Massey breaks down advice from experts on what you should be eating. Do you know which is better for you? Almond milk or regular milk? Almond milk. This salt or that salt? Pink Himalayan. Pink Himalayan, yeah. I guess. Licensed dietitian Kate Richardson says these are just some of the foods that fall under the healthy food halo effect. There are a lot of foods that people think are healthy but actually aren't. Things that are low fat often are loaded with sugar. Which would you choose as the healthier choice? 
If you compare the amount of sugar on the back of some traditional yogurts to ice cream, it's almost the same. When it comes to sugar, while sugar in the raw is less processed, there is no difference when it comes to nutrition. And which is better, almond milk or regular milk? Both contain calcium, vitamin D, vitamin E, and fiber. But unless you have a food allergy, it's not necessary for your health to substitute nut milks for cow's milk. And dairy milk offers a high protein content, while most nut milks contain added sugars. And is pink Himalayan salt worth the extra cash? Himalayan sea salt and table salt both contain similar amounts of sodium. Bottom line, not everything is as good as it's marketed to be. So use your best judgment and ask if you have any questions. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. And a question that beef eaters here in Texas may have, is grass-fed beef better for your health? Experts say it is. It's typically leaner and has less monosaturated fats. Also has more omega-3s, which is linked to better brain health and lower blood pressure. Dun, dun, dun. However, there is one catch. Beef labeled grass fed means the cows have only been fed grass at one point in their lives. Only beef labeled grass finished comes from cows that have eaten nothing but grass for their entire Did lives. Did not know I that. Didn't either. Look for grass, grass finished. Yeah. I've never seen that I've on a meat label. And I've never heard about it. So I have more, more things for us to look, look for when we're shopping in the grocery store. And I would argue that Himalayan salt is better. Okay. We'll go with that. Just, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> right now, let's check traffic right now. 645, here's Officer Nick Solis. Thanks, Mark. Right now, dealing with a couple more accidents that just came out. So this is going to be here. First one's going, going to be uh, eastbound 1604, uh, the access road at U.S. Highway 90, dealing with that one right there. Then we have, oh, there it is, eastbound U.S. Highway 90 West at Loop 1604 South. We also had another accident. It's going to be 35 at Walsham. Don't know how serious it is right now. just came out, but... Uh, northbound IH-35 at Walsham Road. All right, taking a look here at the Transguide 281 and almost still looking good right now, flowing very smoothly. This 410 and 151 traffic's very heavy over there on that side of town near SeaWorld. Uh, 35 in Benzingelman looking great right now. And let's see what else. Um, here we go, 35 and 410 flowing smoothly, but traffic definitely uh, looking a little bit more moderate than it usually does this time of day. Gotcha, but it doesn't look as slick on the roads as it did earlier. As it did earlier, mm -hmm. things have dried out a bit. Just enjoy just now. Looks like we might need an umbrella now and perhaps a light jacket by the uh, mid to latter part of the week. Yeah, it depends on your tolerance, but yeah, we're thinking maybe some cooler air by the time we get into Thursday. Potentially highs in the 70s. This front has been tricky. We we're thinking that it would come through, then it didn't look like it would. It's going to be a close call, but we think that maybe by Thursday we will see some cooler air from this. And we'll show you the timing on that in just a second. First, let's take a look at the radar. We've got showers from Kerrville up to Fredericksburg. Some light stuff moving through northern Bear County, but most of San Antonio at the moment fairly dry. Uh, we're seeing a couple light returns here around downtown and then out west along Highway 90 there. Another little shower uh, moving up towards New Braunfels as well. Everything is fairly light this morning, but we do think that we'll have some more rain chances throughout the course of today. Let's take a look at the future cast. And we'll uh, fast forward here to 12 o'clock. So some showers, maybe a thunderstorm around. And then I think as we get into the afternoon, there's potential for scattered showers and storms. Right now we have the rain chance at about a 40% shot, but it increases tomorrow. So we go to 7 a.m. tomorrow morning, more activity. We could see some thunderstorms out west. Nothing severe, but some of these could put down some good rain. And then as a frontal battery gets closer Wednesday night, uh, we should see some cooler air in the hill country and then some decent chances for showers and storms area wide. And this rain chance is going to continue into Thursday as well with this front around. As far as uh, the rainfall potential, we're talking through Saturday here. But we could see some pretty decent numbers. Best chances are going to be west of I-35. And there is some estimates, maybe three to four inches potentially in spots here around San Antonio. It'll be more on the order of one to two, depending on how it sets up and where that front sets up. Uh, but there is some encouraging news there as far as rainfall goes. We obviously don't want to see the flooding but uh, some healthy rainfall would be uh, great. Uh, outside right now, we've got 76 degrees at the airport, 77 Port SA, 75 Stinson, 75 at Randolph. We still have a south-southeasterly wind. It's pretty muggy out there. We have high humidity levels, 76 Bulverde, 78 in New Braunfels, 75 in Divine, and you're checking in at 77 in Kennedy this morning. Cloud cover pretty common around the areas. We got some of those showers as we showed you. Let's go north though. There's some snow, Casper, Wyoming, Snow is flying this morning. It's trying to get a little bit closer to Denver. One of the earliest snowfalls they've seen in a long, long time. I think it dates back to 1961, last time they saw snowfall this early. 
Uh, so just goes to show you, this is a cool air mass that is working its way down the Rocky Mountains and down the plains. 36 right now in Bismarck. It is 36 degrees right now in Denver after seeing triple digits just a couple days ago. And that front starting to work its way into Texas, starting to see the winds change around in Amarillo. And as we go forward in time here with our computer model, shows the numbers really dropping off buying this front. Impressively so for early September. Uh, this is by 5 o'clock tomorrow showing temperatures potentially in the 40s and 50s out west, and we could see a taste of that in the hill country tomorrow afternoon, then eventually some of that cooler air working towards San Antonio Thursday morning. Still remains uh, sort of a question as how cold it will get here in San Antonio, but I do think we'll see at least a taste of it, as we mentioned, with highs potentially in the 70s on Thursday. So forecast calls for a high around 92 today, 30% chance of rain through noontime, then a 40% chance into the afternoon. Tomorrow, a 70% chance of rain, probably our best chance. High temperatures in the mid-80s, and then uh, a little bit of a cool down Thursday, starting off in the 60s, still a 60% chance of rain. And we actually keep the rain chances going through the weekend, but just some isolated stuff, and temperatures do warm back up into the upper 80s. We're going to be watching this front very closely. It'll be a timing issue, but uh, we'll have more on that, and we'll keep you updated. Uh, here for the next couple days, guys. Nonetheless, exciting to talk about. Yes, what a treat. Very excited. 650, 76 degrees. In September is Sickle Cell Awareness Month, a life-threatening disease that targets children. Tomorrow on GMSA, we will learn how one woman is getting the word out about the disease. Outside with live cam on your Tuesday morning. Lots of clouds out there waiting for the sun to come up on your Tuesday. The news you need to know before you go is coming up and we'll check traffic one more time with Officer Solis. One knock on the door brought three times the trouble for a Southwest side man. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. That man told police he was robbed by three people who came to his house. Now the man says he answered the knock on his door just before 11 last night. Outside his home in the 300 block of Hollenbeck, he initially saw a woman, but the victim says two men then forced their way inside, saying they were going to take his stuff. At some point, the victim suffered a small cut on his back, according to police. He was treated at the scene. Police were not able to track down those people who they say did take off with some of the man's belongings. Reporting from Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Coming up later today on SA Live, Animal World Snake Farm in New Braunfels sent a team to Louisiana to help with cleanup following Hurricane Laura. Mike Ostrage talked to one of the members they sent over. You're not going to want to miss this amazing story about how this incredible group of local reptile and animal lovers devoted their time to helping other animals and people in need. Make sure to tune in to SA Live later today starting at 1 p.m. right here on KSET. Time for a look at Time Saver Traffic with Officer Nick Solis. Thanks, Mark Grant. I'm taking a straight look at the trans guy. 35 and 90 looking good. All around the city, things are looking, starting to look really good right now. Roads are definitely drying up, and that's good news. Just please remember, drive to work safely. Wear your seatbelt, go to the speed limit, and have a good day. Justin? Thank you, sir. Starting to see a little bit of light on the horizon there. Temperatures today still warm into the low 90s. 30% chance of rain first half of the day. We'll up to a 40% chance for the second half. And, of course, Big news, that frontal boundary gets a little bit closer tomorrow. 70% chance of rain. We do think temperatures will come down some on Thursday. 60% chance of showers. The rain chances continue into the weekend. So a busy forecast there. And yes, I think we'll see some relief from this heat that we've been seeing with uh, some pretty impressive temperatures there by the uh, second half of the week there. Guys. It's so exciting, Justin. Thank you for the great news. It is very exciting. Yes. <laughs> We're ready to make s'mores. Yes, I, I am. <laughs> I don't know if it's that cold, yet. but I mean, you know. We just, could, yeah, we could pretend. By Friday morning around the campfire right here on GMSA. <laughs> 6.56, uh, have a great day, everybody. We'll see you back here at 9.